Hello guys, thank you so much for joining in today. In this video, we are going to be looking at difference between shallow copy versus deep copy. One common thing between them is that they both copy an existing object. And what really makes them different is how they copy that object. For example, shallow copy uh, will copy an object, existing object, by just simply using assignment operator. That would be one way to implement shallow, co shallow copy. For deep copy, it would still use assignment operator to copy immutable object and primitive types. But for non-primitive types and mutable object, it is going to copy its attribute. And in that case, again, it will going to copy its non-primitive and mutable immutable attributes. And every time it sees non-primitive type and mutable type, it is going to copy its attribute. And it is going to do that in recursive order until there are not any non-primitive and mutable types. So really the difference is that how they copy non-primitive types. That is the difference between shallow copy and deep copy. The difference lies in how they copy non-primitive types. So the reason for that is for primitive types, when the variable for primitive type, they will hold the actual value of that variable. For example, if I have integer a equal to 5, a will hold 5. Let's say I have an object called x and um, whenever I say x and an object x equal to new x, it is going to hold the location in the memory where that object is located. Because of that reason, we're going to deep copy uh, copies that non-primitive type differently. But if I have an object A and it only had it only has primitive types, then using shallow copy versus deep copy would be no different. If I have object A and I only have immutable types as my attributes, then uh, using shallow copy and deep copy would be no difference. But if I have object A and I have non-primitive types and mutable types as my attributes, then using shallow copy and deep copy would be different. And then reason again is because uh, for non-primitive types, when we say when we uh, have a variable that uh, holds non-primitive type, it doesn't actually hold the value; rather, it holds the location in the memory where that object is located. So let's look at an example. And it will make more sense here. Here I have a med method, and then I created a two individual methods: shallow copy example and deep copy example. Again, the shallow copy example. Um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier that shallow copy is actually um, implemented in Java, and it, that is a clone method that we have in super object class. So if you just want a shallow copy an object, you can simply use a clone method from a super object class. One requirement to that is if you're planning to use shallow copy in your class, your class has to implement a clonable interface. So, so I have a do class here, which has a number of animals, animals, uh, name of do. Uh, As you see, I also have a comment there that is primitive types. Uh, this is a non-primitive types and this is immutable uh, because strings are immutable and then simply I do have a clone method here I'm overriding clone method again uh, I have to implement clonable for that so which I have done here and basically I'm using a default implementation of clone method and this is what you exactly do if you just want a shallow copy of your object you are just going to use a default implementation of clone method but if you have to do something different based on your application need maybe you want a deep copy of your object what you could do is you can provide your own implementation here and then that way you can still use the clone but rather get your custom implementation of clone and most likely it is going to be deep copy because uh, the shallow copy is already provided the example here right so i have uh, this object here new 
object i created a okc zoo i provided a number of animals a list of my all animals and name of the zoo and then i created a clone of okc zoo by simply using clone method again this clone method is our shallow copy i printed those out here just to show you guys they are they look the same and again after i printed out those I went ahead and updated my original Jew. I changed its name, I changed its number, and I also changed uh, the list of its animal. I changed my last animal from monkey to giraffe. And I printed out those uh, original Jew and clone Jew. And let's see what would happen if I run this application. So here, this is the output. So I have original Jew, uh, I have original OKC Jew, I have number of animals, and these are the list of my animals and name of the Jew. And then once, once I copy that, this is my copied uh, Jew by using a clone method. And again, that will give you a shallow copy, right? And I updated my original OKC Jew. After I updated original OKC Jew, I changed the number of animals to 10 and name of the Jew to Dallas Jew. And also changed the last um, animals from monkey to giraffe. And now I haven't done anything to my cloned Jew, but when I print it out, it is different now. It also has this giraffe as a last animal in the, in the list of animals. The reason for that is this animals list here, this is non-primitive types. And as you see, the number of animals didn't change, the name of the Jew didn't change because the number of animals, it was long and that is primitive types. So for example, um, we talked before for primitive types, simply using assignment operator will copy their value, right? And then again, for immutable types, uh, you cannot change once you create those immutable types, they will remain like that. Uh, so when this OKC Jew was created, uh, when we passed this uh, array, what happened was it didn't hold all of this value, rather it hold the location where uh, that object where that array is located in the memory. So if we change that, they both have the same location. What happens is the both object is going to change. And sometimes this is not expected behavior. And that is why uh, people, uh, you, you hear people talking about, hey, this is a silo copy, be careful. Um, and people prefer deep copy because uh, it is kind of unexpected to have your clone object change just because you change your original object. So that's one thing. And now I'm going to show you an implementation of my deep copy, which will not have this uh, unexpected behavior. So as you see, so let's go ahead and look at the deep copy here. So deep copy, pretty much everything the same here, rather than cloning that clone method, I'm used calling that my deep copy method. So if I go inside that deep copy method, Basically, what I'm doing here, again, I talked about how we implement that uh, deep copy. And basically, this is, uh, this is exactly what I talked about. So I retrieve all of their attributes from the current object. And that's why we're using this here. And then since this, uh, this is primitive, it is okay to use assignment operator and directly copy that value over. Uh, this is immutable, so this is good too. But in case of array, uh, it is non-primitive types and it is mutable. So I'm not using simple uh, assignment operator here. Rather, I'm really grabbing every, creating a new array here and then basically copying all of its value from old array to new array and rather use that to create my new copied uh, Jew. And, then, and because of this, what happens is that if if we decided to change anything the, um, with our original Jew and then the animals, my new copy Jew will not have any impact. So let's go ahead and run this. Well, matter of fact, I already ran it before. So let's look at this here. So original Jew, again, same thing. It has monkey here, has monkey there, deep copy. So after we modify original Jew, original Jew got changed. But if you look at that, our deep copy Jew, it never changed because what we really did is that in case of non-primitive types here, an array, rather than just simply using assignment operator and using copying that array, we rather copy it to its individual value in that array and 
I use those to create a new Jew. So this is how we do deep copy. Again, uh, mostly we are really trying to uh, avoid that unexpected behavior. So that is the difference between deep copy and silo copy. Again, by simply looking at the name, silo copy is a silo. It doesn't go that deep. Um, it basically uses assignment operator to copy individual attribute and create a new object. Rather, um, uh, in case of a deep copy, uh, we do use assignment operator to copy primitive types, types and immutable types. But in case of non-primitive and uh, mutable types, we are rather uh, going to copy its attribute and we're going to continue to do that until there are um, not any non-primitive and uh, mutable types. So deep copy really goes deeper and actually copy its actual value rather than copying the location of um, where that object is located. Okay, deep copy. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, uh, feel free to hit thumbs up. And um, if you want to see more video, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, to my channel, and I'll see you in next video. Thank you so much.